Hello, I am Tiny Deol, Managing Director of tinydeol.com Limited. I am a fitness and nutrition expert and a member of the Guild of Fine Foods. I am here to ask you for 52,000 pounds for 15% share in my company. My mission is to improve the world's health in a tasty way. I found a niche gap in the market for tasty, fat-free, ethnic foods when I tried to lose weight myself. I have now developed the world's first cholesterol and fat-free curry sauces, which have two years shelf life, authentic taste, and all green traffic lights of the Food Standards Agency. Unlike other curry sauces, my products are made using no oil, ghee, or butter, no artificial preservatives, no added sugar, no gluten, wheat, eggs, or nuts. These products were launched on QVC TV shopping channel and achieved sales of 636 pounds per minute at a premium price of 3.50 per jar. As a result, I began to generate nationwide interest from Tesco, Sainsbury's, Budgins, Laundies, gyms, importers, and pharmacies. The investment is needed to support the launch of these sources into nationwide grocery stores, budgins, and other supermarkets, and to develop 27 other products in the brand, which are all based on the concept of cholesterol and fat-free. Thank you. I would like you to see these products as well, please. It's an accomplished pitch by Leicester-based Tiny Deal, who needs a £52,000 investment in her virtually fat-free curry sauces. She's offering 15% equity in return. Duncan Bannatyne is intrigued by her progress so far. Tiny, when you said you went on the shopping channel, how much did you say you took in sales? From QVC, within 105 minutes, I managed to sell £35,500 worth of sources. So, is it in the shops? No, it's going to be launched in Budgins. We are being set up as a supplier with Budgins. Okay, what happened when you had interest, from example, from Tesco's? Yes, Tesco actually saw me on the QVC TV yep. shopping channel and they also saw my ready meals. Yep. And they asked us to send them a sample of each one. Yep. But when I went on QVC, I was branded as Curry Slim. Okay. And then I had to rebrand the product and I thought I'll send them all the samples and the ready meals okay. when the brand time. So you're looking for an investment in a company that would own the sauces and all the ready and meals And all well. the ready meals Everything. and my weight loss drink, which is a revolutionary drink. And your weight loss drink, which is revolutionary. Yes. So it's a whole range in the brand. This is just the beginning, the very first step. Can we taste it? We yeah, it? sure, please. Okay. Tiny certainly doesn't lack ambition. But do her products deliver on taste, the dragons want to know. It's very good. I think, bearing in mind, there's no oil in that. That's okay. Tiny passes the taste test. But will her business acumen stand up to the scrutiny of the dragons? Tiny, hi, I'm James. Hello. <clears throat> what does it cost you to produce a bottle? 65 pence at the moment, but when the volumes are increased, it will cost me only 62 pence. OK, and your wholesale price to this, to a supermarket, would be how much? Well, Burgins has agreed at £1.12. 47% gross profit, yeah. I say. Pretty good, actually. Yes. And what do you expect in volume from Budgins? They have ordered in the first month, they have said, 80 cases of each variety to start with. And there are six jars in a case. And there are three varieties now. So 1,500 bottles? Yes. OK, I understand that. Tiny. Tell me, why did you rebrand from Curry Slim yes. to Tiny Diol? I was asked to change a name which doesn't have slim, light or diet in it. Who asked you? Was it the same people who designed your label? I know. And why would you think that, sorry? Probably, I would say, the worst label of any food product I have ever seen. You know when I go shopping? Yes. I do not want to spend three and a half hours trying to decipher what's in the jar. Not only have you rebranded from Curry Slim, but you've actually put Curry Slim back on the label again. Yes, and the reason for that is the brand is Tiny Deol. Only on the curry products, we are going to put Curry Slim in a very subdued manner while we are making this transition. But you've got so many messages on the front of this bottle that it's not clean, it's not sharp, it's not clear what it does. 
But label is the, is the only place where we can put all the messages. And the reason we want this product to stand out different is because it has so many messages. It doesn't stand out, it's confusing. The retail guru's tirade has knocked Tiny's confidence. Now, Deborah Meaden has some questions of her own. Are you a company at the moment? Yes, a limited company. OK. And what does, what's the balance sheet of that look like? The Tiny Doll Company only has just been, has just been started and is going to launch on 15th of May. So it only has sales of £2,010. And Curry Slim had a turnover of £60,000. But you're asking us to invest in what? In tinydeal.com. OK, so yeah. that's a new company. That's a brand with, new company. With just £2,000 worth of yes, turnover yeah, in it. Just in pre-launch. Can, can we talk about your previous company? Does that have any profit in it? or? Uh, in that company, I didn't make a profit. I actually made a loss last year. How much was the loss? Uh, 70000 Is that company still going? That company is being slowly wrapped up. What does slowly wrapped up mean? Because the, all the intellectual property and everything will be moved on yeah, to tiny You've got £70,000 worth of debt sitting in that company. Yes, so against my personal happens? liabilities. That's against my personal liabilities and I'll take care of that myself. Tiny's revelations have set off alarm bells in the den. Theo Pafitis wants to know more about her company's assets. How are you going to move the intellectual property rights from Curry Slim to Tiny Dior? It's just because I, I own all the company, Curry Slim as well, and I'm Tiny Deal, so everything will be just moved on to the new company, all the customer base, Tiny, all the... Can I, can I just suggest, whoever you've talked to on a professional site, it's actually not even legal to do that. It is because we have rebranded the company. No, it's not. It's not legal to transfer assets of a company from a company into another company. At below market price. Tiny's revelation that she's intending to close down one debt-laden business and open up another based around the same products is causing consternation among the dragons. Peter Jones is keen to examine the issue further. Can you just tell us who you owe money to? Just the bank's money. So it's, it's overdraft against personal guarantees, 65,000. Can you pay the bank back tomorrow 65,000 pounds? No, unless they take the property or something from me. So, okay, that's so your... what's your mindset that makes you think the bank is going to allow you to take the only asset that the company has and transfer it into a new company and agree to wind that company up. What makes you think that the bank won't go after you? The bank has said that they will give me anyway three months to decide the new brand and the bank knows about Virgin's deal and the bank knows about the launch of the new brand. You've convinced the bank to wait on the loan because you've got a deal with Virgin's. The deal is for, I think it's 1,440 bottles of sauce I worked out. And you're going to make 47 pence a bottle which will give you 720 pounds. Yes. You're never going to make enough money to pay any of the debts, let alone give somebody a return on the £52,000. Yes. Th there's no way forward. My gut feeling is that you should absolutely stop this now. You should do no more. You should find something else to do with your life. You're never going to make money from this. So I'm sorry. I have to say this, but I'm out. Tiny's responses have cost her her first dragon. And Deborah Meaden is ready to declare her position. Tony, um, I'm going to set aside the confusion over the okay. two businesses. Okay. Because I suspect what's happened here is you, you probably did it with the right intentions. Yes. But your model, I don't get. You got yourself into debt to the tune of £70,000. So it's already not really worked. Okay. So I'm out. Thank you. Tony, um, I think your chances of success, unfortunately, are tiny. OK. This isn't something that's going to make you money. So, for those reasons, I'm not going to invest, and that's why I'm out. Thank you. Tiny, um, I think you've got a long way to go regarding your brand image. You've been confusing as far as the corporate structure of your business is concerned. You've listened to a lot of people on one hand, and somehow I feel you haven't listened to anybody. Because of that, I'm out. Thank you. Three dragons out in quick succession, and only James Khan can now rescue Tiny's investment bid. Will he throw her a lifeline? I've been really impressed with you. I think you've done a fantastic job. Um, my only concern is a very close friend of mine is selling 100,000 meals a week in that market who dominates that area. 
to get into that market is just not that easy. Tony, what I would suggest you do is, um, if you contact me, I will make an introduction for you to meet with him. Thank you. Because he's an expert who I genuinely believe will make a difference to you and it will be free. Thank you. But I think as a viable business today for me to invest in, it doesn't work for me. So unfortunately, I'm out. Okay, thank you. It's a compassionate close to a rocky session for Tiny in the Den. She leaves with a valuable contact number, but not the cash she wanted. Tiny, it seemed to start quite well, didn't it? And then it just sort of slipped away. I think it was all when the confusion started about the two companies, why I was rebranding, and I think they, I didn't make it very clear to them. So I had advice for that, and as far as I think, I'm making the right move. So I'm going to carry on and move on from here. We'll see how you get on. Thank well you. Done. Thank you.